Hey guys, thanks for checking out the Film Geek. I'm doing another Hunts video today. So Charmy and Amy and I are gonna go around checking out some different stuff. She's more into the vintage, pop culture, kind of antique items, whereas we all know I'm a avid movie collector. So I'm gonna be looking for DVDs, Blu-rays, if it's out there, 4K movies, but I normally don't find them. I generally find DVDs. And we're gonna go around mostly indoors. I know in my last video, I went to a flea market outside at our city market. We're not doing that today. It's a little too cold out there right now. So we're gonna go around to more of the indoor. Um, in some areas, you call them in flea markets. Around here, they are antique malls, uh, <laughs> but they're really flea markets. So we're gonna go around to a couple of those. Uh, we're gonna go back to Happy Rock Antiques, which I was, uh, which I filmed in in my first video. I did my DVD hunt, and uh, today we're gonna go back. Uh, I always have a lot of luck at that place, and we're also gonna go to this one that's out in Grain Valley, and it's called uh, Black, excuse me, Brass Armadillo. And we've been there once before, and it, this place is huge. So I'm gonna try to sneak my. Uh, phone in to, to check out some videos. Um, I mean, obviously everything is going to be with you know, no sound, so you know I can't do any of that because there, all these places have music playing. I, I don't know if that's just a thing around here. Everywhere you go, they're playing the radio in these antique malls. So no filming indoors uh, or you know no with with the music and all that so it's just gonna be sound I'm, I want to show you guys some of these places because especially Brett's armadillo the place is huge so I'm gonna try to get some footage in there um, I'm also gonna probably hit some thrift stores here and there see what we find there maybe Goodwill Salvation Army stuff like that um, don't generally have a lot of good luck at the, the Goodwill around here they raise the prices on their DVDs to where I mean I could just go to a vintage store and pick up DVDs at the same price because I think they're, they raise their price to like $3.99 around here, which it, again, that seems an awful lot for a used DVD at a thrift store. So I don't generally go to the Goodwill anymore. Uh, Salvation Army has never been too awful great around here when it comes to movies, but you never know. With those guys, you, you, you never know. So we're going to hit some thrift stores, mostly the antique malls. So hey, uh, let's get going, all right? Stick around. Okay, so we're getting started. We are here. We are at Happy Rock Antiques, antique mall here in Gladstone, Missouri. Uh, we're going to go inside and check out what cool finds we find. Hey guys, all right, well we are done with uh, Happy Rock, so now we've moved on to Brass Armadillo, so you can see behind me here this huge freaking warehouse. We're about ready to go in there and start looking for some awesome, awesome new deals, see what movies we can find or any other cool little things. All right, so let's go inside. All right, well that is everything. We are done. We conquered the Brass Armadillo and we are now headed back into the city. So we are turning off the gold camera here from Green Valley, Missouri. Yes, my glasses are fogging up, so good times with the mask. All right, guys, be back at the place to show off my stuff. Okay, we are back here in the living room. Uh, had a really great day out there, guys. I gotta tell you, um, I found a lot of great stuff. This is one hell of a haul. Uh, I was saving up for a little while to be able to do something like this, and what a day. Uh, we ended up only hitting a couple of spots. We only went to uh, the Happy Rock, uh, Happy Rock Antique, we went to Brass Armadillo, and I had a gift card that was burning a hole in my pocket at one of our local vintage stores, uh, Vintage Stock. So we went by there, and uh, I picked up a lot of really great stuff. Uh, I'm gonna start with the vintage stock. I got all these divided up down here. I'm not kidding, guys. Get sit back and relax, because this is this is gonna take a minute. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. So this was the vintage store that I went to, and this stuff was pretty much, you know, it was. Uh, this is a good spot that I like to go to to make myself feel better. If I can't find anything really good in the wild or anything like that, I stop by Vintage Stock because I always find something there. Again, like I said, um, 
they do oh, video games, comic books, movies, vinyl, CDs, any kind of media you can think of. It's a really cool place. I don't know exactly all the locations of vintage stock. I know they're found here in Missouri, Kansas, um, I don't know, I think they think they go down to like Texas also, but anyways, if you have a vintage stock out there, good for you. It's, it's not a bad little place. All right, let's get this started off with the Criterion Edition of Harold and Maude. This is a movie that I love. This is my all-time favorite movie. It took me a long time to really decide what my favorite movie is. What is the movie that I don't think I could go the rest of my life without ever being able to watch again? And that is Harold and Maude. I, I couldn't live without this movie. Um, I've been wanting to get the Blu-ray Criterion Edition for some time. Uh, like I said, I had a uh, gift card. So boom, Criterion, Harold and Maude. All right, uh, I also came across The Rocketeer. Uh, they had a special going with their used stuff that was like, buy a certain amount and get, you know, I, I basically got a really good deal on these, let's put it that way. So we got The Rocketeer here. It's a little hidden gem. I'm sure we'll talk about that one one of these days. So bad it's good. Frogs. <laughs> Those of you who know frogs, they, you know, you know that's a fun time right there. Uh, I actually, I have this on just a basic edition, but I didn't have the collector's edition and it wasn't that much. So Red Dawn, a collector's edition, it's got a special edition DVD on here with a lot of different documentaries and all. So I literally bought this for its special features, not the movie. So, all right, this is one um, I will be talking about. This movie is hysterical and that is Four Lions. If you haven't seen Four Lions, oh my God, this is a riot. Um, say what you will about the premise, okay? You can call it inappropriate, I don't care. It's it's not, once you watch the movie. Uh, it's about these four ISIS, or, you know, terrorist guys, and they're really bad suicide bombers. Let's just put it that way. And this movie is about that, and it's just... You see, in my life, and in my world, and in my family, the best way to counteract terror is humor. You make somebody look like a fool, and it takes away their power. And let me tell you, this movie does it for you. I also came up with a classic here, Pumpkin Head. I decided recently that I want to be able to, I want to collect all the Pumpkin Head movies. Uh, I'm a little late to the game, so this is going to be not too easy. Uh, they're not the easiest to find. I don't really care the format. All right, so if I bump into them, Blu-ray, whatever. But I'm going to make sure I get all the Pumpkin Head movies. Uh, this is a really fun Lou Diamond Phillips movie, Bats. That's not a misprint. It's it's supposed to be upside down because bats, bats, bats. See, bats, bats. All right, there you go. Uh, this is a movie that I will talk about more on the channel, and that is Everybody Wants Some. Uh, this is like a 1980s Dazed and Confused. I didn't really, I was itty bitty, itty bitty guy in the 70s, so I don't have a lot of 70s memories, but I kicked off the decade of the 80s in my five, so I know the 80s, and this movie is just, just bleeds 80s. I wasn't a teenager during the time, but uh, I knew some. Uh, my uncle, my uncle was a teenager in the 80s, so there you go. All right, so that was my vintage stock haul. Okay, so we'll put those right here. Vintage stock, okay. now. This is the stuff I got from Brass Armadillo. That was that massive warehouse. And well, Brass Armadillo is out in Grain Valley. Um, found out today that they're a chain. So there's a there's six total Brass Armadillos in the country. I have no idea if they're all as large as the one I go to in Grain Valley. Have no clue. But that place is massive. You get lost in there, and that's another reason too. We were in these these places for a really long time. I really dove in and searched. So let's get this started. Ugh. Yeah, and most of these movies that I did pick up are stuff that it's definitely going to be talked about probably on this channel. Definitely, probably. Definitely, probably. Definitely, probably. Alright. So we have Kevin Smith's Chasing Amy. Breakfast at Tiffany's. And if you don't love the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's, I got no use for you, man. Got no use for you. All right, Natural Born Killers. All right. This one I was really excited for, um, mostly uh, because I'm a fan of The Outcast, and this is a musical, Idle Wild. They did the music in it. Uh, I don't know exactly how much involvement that they had in this. 
I knew it was out in theaters for a little while, and then it just kind of vanished on me, and I, I kind of forgot about it. And when I was going through one of the bins, I this popped up, and I was like, oh my god, yeah! So, pick that up today. Internal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Jim Carrey. Of course, we all know that one is really great. Kate Winslet, Jim Carrey. Um, Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood. Big fan of the Elijah Wood. Okay, so here we are. All right, this one I was really stoked about also, too. This one's going to probably end up on my um, underrated animated films, and that is Legend of the Guardians. The Legend of the Guardians, the Owls of Gahalo. Gahal? Gahal? Whatever. I don't know. Wow! The animation in this movie is ridiculous. It is so amazing. And this is a Zack Snyder film. This is one of his first films, actually. So if you haven't seen this movie, check it out. It's it's not too awful easy to find out there. I don't even know. I, I'm sure it has a Blu-ray edition. If anything, it's because it's a Zack Snyder movie. All right, this guy right here could actually end up in my forgotten superheroes movies, and that is The Spirit. He almost did, to be perfectly honest. I was, I was going to actually include The Spirit this last week, this, you know, last week. Um, it's, it's a fun movie, but it's not the best. I mean, it definitely, uh, it definitely has its issues. Let's just put it that way. Although, if you want to watch a movie where the director just said, hey, Mr. Samuel Jackson, just do it, man. You just be you, man. This, this is nothing more than scene chewing from Samuel Jackson throughout the entire thing. He plays the villain, the octopus, and oh my god, he is so ridiculously good in this. This is the underrated little Stephen Martin gem, and that is Nova Kane. I was pretty stoked to actually find this movie. It's a, whoop, I got a little higher there. It's a comedy thriller kind of movie. It's a very dark comedy. He plays a dentist who gets kind of caught up in um, some crime. It's got Helen Bonham Carter in it. It's just oh, Laura Dern. Laura Dern's in it. I forgot she was in it. Um, it's good. It's a really good movie. It, it, it's it's fun, if anything. Uh, so check it out if you haven't seen Nova Kane. I feel like I'm just doing it. Alright, here's another one. What I like about this is some of them still have goo on them. Sorry. What I, what I like about this one is, is that it is... Um, uh, the Edge of Tomorrow, okay, but if you notice it has Live, Die, Repeat. That was the original title of this film until they changed it. And honestly, I feel like both titles kind of suck. Um, <laughs> Edge of Tomorrow makes it sound like a ride at Disney World, and Live, Die, Repeat sounds like a catchphrase. It doesn't sound like the title of a movie. It sounds like you what you say after the movie, like this is, you know, Tom, Tom Cruise is Alien Resurrection Man live, die, repeat. So, yeah, you can see where that kind of screwed everything up. Alright, uh, yeah, this is another one of those Disturbia. Everybody's got their feelings on Shia LaBeouf. Um, I, I just, I don't judge actors by actions. This is a good movie. I like this movie. Uh, back to Sam Jackson again. Snakes on a plane. Because I'm tired of these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. God, I'm glad I have that one now. Um, this is Ghosts on Mars. Not the best Carpenter film, but it's not a terrible Carpenter film because there is no such thing as a terrible Carpenter film. This is just not his finest work, but I did pick that up because I absolutely love John Carpenter. Uh, American Splendor. Um, this is a great movie. This, this is about a comic book artist. Oh, God, I always lose his name. Oh, uh, hang on a second here. Harvey, <laughs> Harvey Pecker, Pecar. Harvey, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Anyways, it's one of the it's a, one of the earliest of like the alternative type comic books. It doesn't. It, it relies mostly on his real experiences in life, and this is the movie about the man who made the comic book about his own life. So here's the movie about the man who made the comic book about his real life. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah, this is still Brass Armadillo, by the way, guys. So <laughs> I'm just, just letting you know. Like I said, I've been waiting to do this for quite some time, so we went just bonkers today with the collection. All right, this is another 
I really, really, really like this movie, and that is Dan in Real Life. This was the one, at least the movie for me, that I was like, wow, Steve Carell, wow, he's great. It's just, just an all-round actor, not, not just like, you know, he's so funny or anything like that. This is, this is the movie I felt like he really showed off in, you know? Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, I don't know, something... I, I, come on, it's an early Guy Ritchie. I, I'm not sure if it's his first movie or second movie, but it is an early Guy Ritchie. Um, I picked that one up because I said uh, the Locked and Loaded Director's Cut. So I do believe... Um, I, I don't do believe. I do have this in my collection, but I figured it was a dollar. So, yeah. I picked it up. I love these kind of DVDs, and that is the multi-pack DVD. And these are all pretty good crime thrillers right here. So we got King of New York, State Property, and the honest to good reason I got this, and that is the movie Belly. Yes, I picked this up really just for that movie right there, and that is Belly. If you haven't seen the movie Belly, Man, man, that is an intense, just awesome, 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 awesome movie. So you got to check that one out. All right, this is the movie that I bring up to a lot of people when they say Hayden Christensen is a bad actor, and that is Shattered Glass. This movie is great, okay? I don't care what you say about Hayden Christensen after you watch this movie. His performance is outstanding. This is a very... A drama movie. Um, it's not, it, there's not any humor in it. And what it's about, it's a true story about a journalist by the name of Glass, and he, um, well, makes up stories. He tells a bunch of lies, and it's great. I mean, it's a good movie. This, this really happened, and, and, and this is really good. You, if you haven't seen Shattered Glass, check it out. It'll probably end up in one of my videos because, uh, you know, I like to save those kind of movies. This is the one I picked up. This is just a guilty pleasure. The Hebrew Hammer. Uh, the Hebrew Hammer is a Comedy Central movie. Um, there was an edited version that I believe was on Comedy Central. This is the R-rated DVD version. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this movie or not. This this is a Jewish exploitation film, okay? So it's supposed to be like a black exploitation, but it's uh, it's it's a Jewish exploitation. So like he shoots somebody and he's like Shalom. It's freaking awesome. And yes, that is uh, <laughs> that that is to see. Oh God, uh, Adam Adam Gold Goldberg Adam Goldberg. That is Adam Goldberg. Not the Adam Goldberg from the TV show Goldberg. The other Adam Goldberg. In fact, they actually make a joke about that in the show. All right, this is... There's so many really good World War II movies out there. But this one is my personal favorite. And that is The Memphis Belle. And I don't know why I have never had this movie in my collection until today. Uh, but my God, this is just... It's, I'm sure you guys have seen it. I don't feel like this is an underrated gem. Maybe it is. Sometimes I don't know movies are underrated gems because I think they're wonderful. So I think everyone thinks they're wonderful. But The Memphis Bell is the story of one of the big B-52 bombers, the Flying Fortresses, and it's their last mission. So in World War II, pilots and, and crews of these airplanes, if they flew so many missions, they could go back home. And this was the, this plane was the only one that had never had any kind of damage done to it. Everyone in the crew had always made it home. And this is the true story of their final mission. So if they made a movie about it, you know it's good, right? Okay, so uh, I'm also, a, one of my favorite childhood franchises was the Bad News Bears, which I do have all of the original uh, Martin, Martin Landau. <laughs> I have all of the original movies, uh, but this one is the remake with Billy Bob Thornton, and that is the Bad News Bears. They didn't continue on with all of the Bad News Bears, uh, Bad News Bears in Japan and everything. This one is just uh, just the one-shot Bad News Bears. Here's another little 
sci-fi hidden gem from Michael Crichton, that's Spear. Uh, yeah, that's starring Dustin Hoffman, Samuel Jackson, Sharon Stone, Taking Lives, a little Angelina Jolie uh, thriller? I don't, I don't think that one was really a horror movie, it's just a thriller. Now this one I was happy about, me being a big fan of the Monty Python, and that is Monty Python, The Meaning of Life, which has my all-time favorite Monty Python song in it. It's the very end of the movie. Ah, oh, oh, I love that song. You know what I'm talking about. I can't really go in. I have to sing it to remember the, the name of the song. Um, I also picked up North by Northwest. Yes, Alfred Hitchcock. And... Doomsday? I don't know anything about this movie, man. It was a dollar, I saw it, I bought it, and so I'm now a proud owner of Doomsday. Okay, this is my last bag. My last bag from Brass Armadillo. I mean, look at the size of this stack over here. Oh. But I do like to remind people that I only generally pay a dollar to three dollars for all of these. All right, not all of these, but each, each. Okay, so this one I picked up. Um, yeah, there was some stickum that was still on there, so that, that was bad. Okay, so this one, um, I got this mostly for 8mm, uh, but I never even knew there was an 8mm too. And I swear, just like, <laughs> it just looks like some kind of like After Dark Cinemax movie that they were like, yeah, 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 8mm too, so just slap that on there, guys. We're just gonna write coattails on that one. Uh, I am a big baseball fan, as we have established in other videos, and nothing I love more than a really great baseball movie, and this is one of the best, The Natural, Robert Redford, The Natural. This is just great, man. Uh, I mean, this is classic baseball. This goes back to like the 1920s or the 1900s. I mean, it's early baseball. And God, I just, I just love this movie. This is one of those like, you know what? I want to watch an underdog who, who wins in the end. I'm going to watch The Natural. God, this movie's great. All right. Full Metal Jacket. Funny story about this. I thought I owned Full Metal Jacket because I had a case for Full Metal Jacket. There is no movie in Full Metal Jacket, so it's just a jacket. So now it's loaded. Alrighty. My love for the strange and unique musical. So we got Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Ah oh, man, come to get your hair cut and have a meat pie. God, this movie is so much fun, right? Oh, God, that was a good one. All right, and then this was a Stephen King. I, I want to say it was a miniseries, a made-for-TV miniseries. I'm a Stephen King nut. I'm positive I saw Red Rose, but I wasn't 100% certain because I've watched so much Stephen King stuff over the years. I picked it up, so this was, again, just like uh, another dollar thing, and I'm like, whatever. Rounded out my once uh, my Mexico trilogy today. I got Once Upon a Time in Mexico, so I was pretty stoked about that one. Um, normally when I've come across Disney movies at thrift stores or places of that sort, they're in really, really bad condition because they're kids' movies, and so kids have primarily had their hands all over them, but this one was in surprisingly good shape. So, uh, yeah, two bucks, Alice in Wonderland. There wasn't really a whole lot of thought in that, I just bought it. Uh, the Criterion Edition of A Life Aquatic. I don't know if I've discussed my love of Wes Anderson films on this, and I'm sorry you don't agree with me. What's up, Pam? Wes Anderson is a film genius, and I know you're going to give me trouble about that later on down the road, but I don't care. I don't care. You can call him pretentious all you want to. He's not. He's not. It's good stuff. All right, so that's the end. Oh, that's the end of Brass Armadillo. And so now we're going to bust into everything I found at uh, the Gladstone, or sorry, Happy Rock Antique. That's just a nickname. Gladstone, Happy Rock, yeah, we... We got jokes here, Missouri. All right, now this wasn't a movie. It's a movie kind of tie-in thing, and I just, I just had to have it. If you watched any of my 12 Days of Christmas videos, then you know what my all-time favorite Christmas movie is, and it is Santa Claus the Movie. So this is Santa Claus the Movie, the storybook, 
it's kind of cool. It's got the whole movie in here. It's that old school 80s thing that they would do for you. <laughs> so it's kind of like the story of the Santa and the elves. And it, it looks like it just gets up to the moment where... Uh, no, it does. It does the whole movie. It does do the whole movie. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's just got the whole story in here. You know, it's one of those classic little kid things. So this was three bucks. This was a little... So I got this for myself. And I love this. I pointed this out to Charming Amy. It says Elf Made at the bottom, which was on the the toys in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyways, um, Santa Claus the Movie Storybook. That's just fun. Three bucks. All right. Here we go. Dig all these out of here. Now, this was a fun little journey today. And... We spent so much time in these places, and it shows. <laughs> All right, now I picked this one up again because it was inexpensive. Um, I'm familiar with this movie, but I've never seen it, and that's Hell Ride. Uh, Hell Ride. Michael Madison, Dennis Hopper. It's it says. Quentin Tarantino presents. I think he just produced it or something. But yeah, written, directed by Larry Bishop. It's a grindhouse wannabe movie. Like I said, I, I've never watched this movie, but I'm familiar with it. And it was on the shelf for a couple of bucks. I mean, it was less than a rental. So I'm like, yeah, that's mine. That's coming home with me. All right, now this is the most expensive item I bought today, okay? And that is the complete Star Trek movies, both Generation and the original Star Trek on Blu-ray. Yes! Now, I did pay a little bit for these, but I felt that these right here were well worth it. Um, I spent $24 for both of these. So, like I said, this is definitely uh, the more expensive item that I picked up today, but they're in really great condition. Uh, there's the movies in here. Uh, there's special edition stuff, you know, and the 50th anniversary. I'm a Star Trek nerd. I apologize, but uh, Star Trek. <laughs> I love Star Wars, don't get me wrong. I'm one of the few Star Trek Star Wars fans out there. Um, I always say that, you know, they're two completely different monsters. I don't care what you guys think. You don't have to choose. Why not both? All right, here we go. Um, a nice little thriller here. Live and die in LA, Willem Dafoe. Really good stuff. This is a movie that I've decided to give another shot and that is Scream 3. Um, I did not like this movie and What's Up Pam is slowly but surely convincing me to check this one out. So. If I could admit to try to like Scream 3, you can watch some more Wes Anderson. That's all I'm saying. Uh, when you find Rambo 3, you buy Rambo 3. Okay, now this one, I am not familiar with any of the movies whatsoever in this collection. Drive-In Cult Classics. This has such great classics as The Babysitter, Weekend with the Babysitter, The Pink Angels, Blood Mania, Single Room Furnished, Van Van no Van Nuys Boulevard, Van Nuys Boulevard. Oh, this is good. The Pom Pom Girls, that classic 1976 film, The Pom Pom Girls, Malibu Beach. Now, these are all from the late 60s and 70s and all, and I am fairly certain that this is uh, soft porn. <laughs> and I picked this up today. I just couldn't resist it. <laughs> all right, now this is another really awesome uh, hidden horror movie gem, and that is Wolf Creek. Holy crap, this movie will leave you in just, yeah, this is this is one of those really mess with you for days kind of movies. Um, it's based off of a true story, but in the same shape that, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is based off of a true story. 
Um, it's more about, kind of reflects the events of a serial killer in, well, I don't even know who's he a serial killer, but, but a killer in Australia. Um, the Backpack Killer? Backpack... I bet it's on here somewhere. But anyways, uh, he killed um, a whole bunch of backpackers, and then this movie is just kind of based off of the idea of how that happened, and the guy who plays the villain in this movie, he is haunting. Wow, it's so good. All right, now this is a little hidden gem that's been getting a lot of buzz lately, and I was very stoked to find this one, and that is Exorcist 3. Yeah, Exorcist 3. It's, that's, like I said, this one's kind of becoming one of those movies that is popping back up into the, in, into the relevancy world, and uh, so I'm pretty happy to find that, actually. Now, underrated and the Coen Brothers don't generally go together, but this is an underrated Coen Brothers film, and that is Miller's Crossing. Very stoked about that. As I've said before, I'm a massive Coen Brothers fan. So this was a good find for me. I was really happy about that. A nice little thriller horror movie here for y'all. So this is good. Freeway, Keith or Sutherland, Reese Witherspoon. This was another really good solid find. I don't, I don't know if there's a Blu-ray out there for this movie or not, to be perfectly honest. It has this really cool, like, Little Red Riding Hood thing going, and like, you know, Keith Sutherland's the big bad wolf, and Reese Reith Witherspoon's supposed to be Red Riding Hood and everything. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's a good one. Alright, now this is a movie that a lot of people probably know, and that is Requiem for a Dream. So, I basically bought this movie because I like having things that sit on my shelf. Uh, not that this is a bad movie by any means. This is a hard to watch movie. Big difference. One of these days when I feel like I just want to hate humanity, I'll turn the news off and I'll watch that. All right, I picked this up because this is a special recut, special edition of Sin City. I wasn't familiar with this one. Um, special guest director, Quentin Tarantino, cool. Uh, but it came with like a bunch of extra stuff. It's got right here, this is badass. Uh, it's got a Sin City graphic novel that came with it, um, which I do have these in the actual comic books, but hey, this is a neat little collector's edition, so I picked that up today. The box, you know, the, the outer jacket's a little worse for wear, and there's some bumps here and there, but that was three dollars. Yeah, so that came home with me today. This is a funny story, okay? I bought this, as you can see, it's got string around it it was a set okay and I paid four dollars for the set so I paid um, like 75 cents DVD but here's the thing I didn't really want any of them except one because uh, <laughs> you got the hangover I already have a copy of Dumb and Dumber I'm uncertain about me myself in my Irene I'm pretty sure I have that in one of those like I don't have a standalone of me myself and Irene I know that for a fact open range Kevin um, Excuse me, um, cowboy movie, yeah. But the movie I got this for, The Lawnmower Man. The Lawnmower Man, yeah. <laughs> I saw this for four bucks, and I know that is a tough to find DVD. And yeah, so I kept them all bundled together for you guys just to see that I was a sucker and I bought the freaking hangover. So I bought a movie that I do not like. Ooh, that's covering, uh, covering me up too much there. <laughs> I bought a movie that I don't like just to get Lawnmower Man. Something is wrong with me. <laughs> okay, so. <sighs> this is just a movie I remember Tommy Chong being in and it was cheap. And that is Far Out, man. And that's another one of those, like, uh, during the 80s, there was this whole, like, hippies are so funny, let's make movies about them. And, uh, so this is one of those. It's a hippie in the weird 80s yuppie world. He likes smoking weed and, and being non-materialistic. Uh-oh, it's the 80s. We do cocaine and buy things. So, that's what that's all about. Uh, <laughs> this is fun. Heartbreak Hotel, which is about a bunch of teenagers who have a pink Cadillac and kidnap Elvis. 
and Indian Summer. Indian Summer is just a movie about some friends who are camp counselors and they get together. It's not a slasher film. Yeah, a bunch of people go to get together to camp and, and no one dies. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I've said it before, I really love westerns. So we have this full of dollars and a few dollars more. Good, the bag and the ugly, hang them high. And the Magnificent Seven and the Alamo. I couldn't be happier. This is a great haul with those right there. Uh, a little underrated gem from Mel Gibson, Payback. Uh, this is one of those movies that actually the, um, the studio version is better than a director's cut. I mean, it doesn't happen often. But this movie, the, the theatrical release of this movie really kept it kind of, it's a revenge flick, uh, but they keep it kind of lighthearted. And where in the original theatrical or the director's cut, it's very dark. Not that this is a lighthearted film, it's still pretty dark, but, but they cut out a lot, of, like, a lot of the humor was gone, I should say. This is another dual feature that I picked up for one movie, and that is Fright Night. I already own a copy of Urban Legend. But I do not own a copy of Fright Night. It's uh, kind of a hard one to find, so I was pretty stoked about that. I mean, it would have been happier with Fright Night 2 because that one is legit impossible to find from what I understand. Um, I know people who own it. <laughs> I'm not one of them. All right. We're coming to the end here. I promise this is the last batch. And then I will let you guys, if you haven't already, quit. <laughs> quit. Here we are. This is the end of the road. <sighs> Dragon Wars. I've never seen this movie. It was a dollar. It says Dragon Wars. I bought it. <laughs> All right. The original Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's cool. That's the old black and white 1950s version, or 60s, was it 60s or 50s? Ah, I don't know, 50s or 60s, somewhere in that area. Another one that I'm really stoked about, this is an unopened copy of Valley of the Dolls. <laughs> yes, Valley of the freaking Dolls. I also, uh, I love classic old films. I love classic comedy, and one of my favorite comedy teams is the Marx Brothers. And I'm really happy to pick this one. You thought I was going to say the Three Stooges, didn't you? I, they're okay, but they are no Marx Brothers. This one's awesome. Uh, Johnny B. Good, which not only is that a really great movie, but this was the Kansas City Public Library copy. I don't know how they ended up with it over there, but uh, I mean, that's not a sticker, that's printed onto the cover. Kansas City Public Library. Uh, now, with my new um, forgotten franchise that I'm doing, this was perfect, and that is The Prophecy. I really dig these movies. Um, as I said before, I am a sucker for any kind of religious horror movies. Yes, I will eat them up like candy. I love religious horror movies. I don't know why, I'm not a religious person. I just, I find it very fascinating. <laughs> okay, all right, so here we are, the last few movies. Robert Downey Jr., Zach Galifianakis, Due Date. Pretty popular movie, I'm sure everyone I'm talking to has seen it. All right, another classic film, Marathon Man. If you're not familiar with Marathon Man, that's the movie that is it safe? Is it safe? That's where that came from. And why everyone is afraid of the dentist. All right, and this is another one here. This is, I love me some Charles Bronson. I do have the Death Wish series, but this is just some of his other random films. And honestly, I picked this one up mostly for the mechanic, uh, the original mechanic that is. And that, no, and that's not the one with Christian Bale, the mechanic with uh, Jason Statham. <laughs> That's the Charles Bronson version. Oh, this is a movie that is, surprisingly enough, almost forgotten, and I am extremely surprised that I found The Contender. 
This is a drama. It was an Academy Award nominated best film and you can't find this movie anywhere. Uh, I think I found it on YouTube streaming once and I watched it there and I, I haven't seen it anywhere since. But this movie is just absolutely ridiculously good. Uh, thriller drama, Gary Oldman, Jeff Bridges, Christian Slater, and it's about um, um, the vice president dies and the president has to choose a new vice president and he chooses a woman and it, the first female vice president and there's controversy and there's all sorts of other stuff in it. It's, it's a good film. It's very, very good and sad. Sad that it's just fading away from existence. And here is the last movie. So I decided to cap it all off with Caddyshack 2. Yeah, Caddyshack had a sequel. You don't hear boomers talking about that one. They're always just talking about the other Caddyshack, but there was another Caddyshack, and I own it now. It is not as good as the original Caddyshack. Uh, it's got its own flavor, you would say. It's still very similar. Instead of Bill Murray, we have Dan Aykroyd. He plays, I can't remember if he was his cousin or his brother and everything. It's still the same basic premise, underdog, becomes the winner for the day, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of recycled jokes, but the point is that I own it now. That's mine. So, there we go, guys. There it is. That is my big DVD uh, <laughs> spectacular shopathon. I spent a lot of time out digging around in a bunch of stuff. I have, I'll be honest with you, I've already gone through the reason when they're sticky to some of them are kind of sticking to each other is I brought these home and totally Clorox wiped these things down. So, so that's what I was doing when I got home. I just wiped all these down with Clorox. Just, you can't be too safe, right? All right, well, hey guys, thanks for checking out the Film Geek. If you like what you saw here today, this is a ton of a change from my normal vibe, which of course is mostly movie reviews and, and recommendations, but every now and then I like to do something a little bit different. So this is one of my going out there, finding some movies. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw here, don't forget to hit the subscribe. Pardon me. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. And as I always say, folks, keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna. Obviously.